Welcome back. Take a seat and uh, sit back and enjoy the next however many minutes. So we got some rain this weekend, which always puts us in a better mood, especially this time of year. Unless if we've gotten too much, which is rare, but we've been kind of short this year. So we shut off most of the wells except for some of the northern ones uh, this weekend. My brother started one up for me yesterday, which is the big one of the big pivots, it's a 300 acre pivot, so you kinda gotta keep ahead of that one um, just to make sure you don't get behind. It's that big pivot. We tried, it. it's hilly, and so the hilltops will kinda dry out sooner than the bottoms, and so you kinda gotta play that game of the happy medium between keeping the hills, hilltops watered and not over watering the bottoms too much, but. They really start to look better this time of year. Like I said in one of my previous videos, June is not the prettiest month for soybeans. There's the water. I'm just gonna switch these. And then this is the one I've been doing with the surge valves for those of you who've seen my previous video. So I'll go flip the side and kick it over to the corn. Like my rubber boots. Actually, right now, I think I might hop on the old Japanese horse, head down to the other end, and just check to see how many of these rows are starting to make it through. And, yeah, just see how we're doing, I guess. They're assembled in the USA. I don't know, are they Chinese or Japanese? I think they're Japanese. I don't know. Tell me in the comments below. C. It's like maybe a few more got through. It's kind of hard to tell. The beans are covering up the row. Probably oh, seen a few back here. Kind of a small pocket of beans on the west side of this well before it crosses the creek to the other side to the cornfield that we irrigated yesterday and my wife I got a lot of these rows, so I appreciate that. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. While I'm waiting for the water over here, I'll flip the flip the valve to let it go across the creek. And I'll start slamming some gate shits. I don't know if you can hear the air coming through it. That sounds like a jet taking off. Shut these down and catch you on the other side. Okay, came across. We're gonna go in here and flip some stuff. We're going west, we want it to go north. I use my leg energy for most of this. Now we got it shifted going north. Do a set over there. <sighs> Corn looks good back here. One of the things we've been watching out for is something called western bean cutworm. And I've been talking to the agronomist about it. I learn a lot of this stuff from agronomist or other people as well so don't think oh this rob he's so smart a lot of the stuff you pick up from other people no man is an island that's kind of the deal out here or at least on our farm it's about who you surround yourself with not so much what i know so as the water's kind of creeping in back here i don't know if i'll be able to spot one but he was showing me how you kind of spot them the other days when you're kind of looking towards the sunlight and the leaves You'll be able to see like these little egg masses. Yeah, the corn's got a lot of dew on it, so I don't know how invasive I want to get out here. 
Tja. I'm trying, folks. I ain't seeing any right here. I don't really want to get all wet. But when you're looking up into the leaves, you'll be able to see these little egg mass areas. They're just really tiny. But anyway, once they reach an economic threshold, once again, I can't remember what that is. We just kind of tell, do what he tells us to do. Once you hit that threshold, you got to treat it. It doesn't take a lot to get rid of them, but you kind of got to be timely with it when the, right when the tassels come out, because what they're going to do is they're going to hatch from those eggs that are laid on the, the leaves, and they're going to crawl down here and start eating the silks and start messing with your ear down here. And so you want to stay on top of those. Um, typically how they're treated is either through a pivot with uh, chemigation. You can put some insecticide that way or through a plane is typically how we've, ever, we've done it on our farm. I don't know why. I'm just going to be honest with you guys right here. Smelling it pollinating is like very therapeutic right now. I don't know if it's just makes me feel like I'm getting back to normal or or what but feels good looks good out here too now this is going to be really tiny because it just basically put itself out here a week ago or so that'll be a nice year if that fills out put that back for organic matter We're just checking the dripper, the oiler, or whatever you call it. That lubricates the well. This is the only pivot I got running, just because it's that big pivot. It's like I'm going to need to start spraying around the pivot points. It's like weeds want to grow here or something. Fun fact, for those of you who watched the video, remember when I did a little dirt work around here? This is the area. It grew something. Got to be excited about that. If you ain't excited about anything. For some reason last night, they controlled us, which I don't know why, because it wasn't that hot. Sometimes I wonder. But auto restart didn't work on this one. And what I mean by control is these electric power units, uh, the power company, will control you every once in a while if their load capacity gets too high they'll start controlling these electric wells just so they can handle all the, the electricity needs happens a lot in the summertime uh, especially during the heat of the day is typically when it happens but last night I don't know it was like six o'clock or sometime five o'clock they just started controlling us and it wasn't that hot I mean it, like usual but I'm sure they have their reasons but this one didn't auto restart like it should have because there's a feature on you can put on these that'll kick it back on if it shuts it off and then they'll release it it'll turn it back on so it works kind of stinks about that as you lose like 12 hours of irrigating time then and if they control us again today i'll have to make sure i come back out here at night and start it back up so I don't know, we'll see how it works. But I'm gonna put a little fungicide. We got some carryover fungicide from last year that we gotta use up for that Cortiva cash. Don't get me started on that. But we gotta go up there and I'm limited to so many pounds I can lift. So I'm more or less filming this to show my wife that 
I'm not gonna lift it up on like that what I used to. I'm just gonna drag it in this one time and go from there. It survived. I was driving the speed limit. Limit, limit. I love all those freaky words. You know the show I'm talking about. Pulling an insectigator take two. It's like it was meant for this. So I got her up here. I think it made it in one piece. But this being a TNL, a hydraulically driven pivot, the controls are not at the center point on this one. So I gotta go to the end tower. And I did, can't remember if I wrote it down in the box, but I'll probably have to kind of figure out the speed of this pivot, speed it up, and then kind of figure out how, how long it's gonna take to make a revolution. And then I'll come back here and hopefully get this rest of this set up ready to rock and then we can uh, chemigate. This is at the north end of the pivot. It's always kind of eerie under these. Should have been a doctor or lawyer and such. I've been doing this for a living. I wrote them down, but they faded out. So we'll have to measure it. I'm gonna put the camera down because this takes a little bit but what I'm gonna do is measure mark it out and then time it it's coming this one flag didn't have a flaggy on it so we'll make this the first one I'll hit go on the stopwatch then we'll time it to go down to the next one and it's like the world's worst parade here we go so the reason why we wouldn't just run at the normal speed Typically, because we don't need that much water when we're applying a fungicide or insecticide, we kind of want as little water as possible, so we're going to run that pivot around as fast as we can. Plus, we can do more pivots in a short amount of time, but this one you just kind of want as less water so we're not just so diluted that it's not going to be as effective, so that's what we're doing. Let's go 255. So I did the math. We're moving like 6.9 feet a minute. And well, all the math done together. You kind of got to use your pies and <clears throat> all that to figure out how many hours this pivot takes to do a full circle at the speed we're going. So let's do that. Before I get all this started, this is a 12 volt adapter for these. And of course it tangles like no other. But you just took it up to the battery. And then you got to hook this brown wire up to the coil side of your Murphy switch, which is a safety switch for the motor. So if the motor quits, it'll shut off this so we're not pumping junk into the well. Oh, this has got a lot. I'm pretty sure that's the C. I'll double check, but that's your coil. Oh, it's kind of loose. I'll tighten that up, put it on there, and we should be ready on this side. All right, we got it set up. Well, I may add a little bit more water. Sometimes you get a little foam on the top and it's hard to tell the water line on that. But the ship is set. I got it set. It's running off that 12 volt battery, which is being charged by the motor. So that's how this one works. The other ones usually run off a 480 3 volt. They both have a converter. They use the same motors, they just convert them the same. Yeah, rev this up. Let's get out of here. I set one up before on another pivot that goes just to an electric pivot. It was pretty simple because everything has been all set up. The only problem is, is uh, it's been controlled. So I'm just kind of guesstimating where things should be at. Should be about right. 
considering where stuff is, but I guess we'll see where it's at in the morning and go from there. I feel confident though, everything was kind of set right. That's the only setback is you get it pretty close with these. The only problem is it's not like an exact, like you're spraying it with a plane or a sprayer, but it's also free application and you get your chemical a lot cheaper. It's the way cheaper way to do it. But like I said, there's, there's cons to everything. I had to come get some uh, Murphy fuses. I was having some issues up there on that Eddieville pivot. Hey, Red Pickup. I think my issue is our pivot monitor is pulling too much juice. And it's popping my Murphy switch. That kills my motor. So I'm going to have to get that figured out. So the ag sense comes into kind of the brain of this TNL box here. These unscrew. I don't know why. After I was talking to the guy about it, I was like, I don't know why I didn't just unhook it. I've done it before in the past when I had issues before. I guess we'll see for sure though if this is it. Got to get the bomb out. This works, these fuses shouldn't pop. So just to kind of show you how this works, this engages your start safety switch. And then this is how you engage your motor to start it, to kind of bypass it. Well, if you hear it, when I turn this on and I have that engage, that's running. But see, since the motor shut off and it knows it, when I turn this on, it kicks it out because the safeties are engaged. So that shows me that it's working properly and that this shouldn't run if this isn't running. So it's a good sign of things are about to get better, hopefully. Except for I won't be able to know where my pivot's at because the accents isn't working, the pivot monitor. Now I kicked that in with my foot, the PTO, because I can't quite do it with my hands yet. <laughs> So this happened. Good thing I stopped because it was working. I came back. So I'm going to splice it. Put them up in there for protection, maybe. Well, they don't find you handsome. They'll find you handy. That's right. I heard you get used to those pivot monitors so much that it almost makes you nervous to leave them. But that's how we always used to do it. I think I'm going to miss Margaret going to sleep, darn it. Hopefully these trips will work around and tomorrow that they'll be applied. I think we will uh, call this video good, so... Uh, uh, I was talking to, or I mentioned to a guy in the comments on the last video that I might try to do a follow-up video kind of from what I missed from planting season because we did try a couple different things um, to see what's going on. So I may do that next video. We'll see. I'm not making any promises, like I said. So yeah, we'll see what it comes. I also kind of want to do one just kind of on the history of my, my heart surgery and kind of just to let you guys in on what's going there. Right now I feel really good. Um, today and tomorrow, I'm, my lift uh, capacity or my restrictions have gone from 10 pounds to 25 pounds. So I can definitely feel it getting better. It's still, you know, there where they cracked me open, but um, everything else feels pretty good. I'm trying to get my INR stable and things like that. If those of you wonder, I, I got a mechanical valve and you got to keep your blood thinner. That's kind of a thing I'm going to have to deal with the rest of my life. but. Hey, I'm here, right?
and I get to see my daughter and my son and my wife. So I'm happy for that. So praise God for that. And I'm rambling. So we will see you on the next one later.